Hey guys, in this video we're going to be looking at DNA. So over in the background on my desk I have my model of DNA and that's what we're going to be looking at today. Now you can see on our DNA that we have these different colour bits here. These are the bases. There are four different bases in DNA. We have A, T, C and G. So here we have um, T which is orange and this is going to be bonded with A which is blue. So A and T always go together and C and G always go together as well. And it doesn't really matter, well for the purposes of this model, there's no fixed order for them to go in. And then around the edge here we have our deoxyribose and our phosphates. And the way that these are structured means that this forms a double helix. So you can see that there are two helices here and they go round like this. Now the order that these bases in will determine what amino acids are produced and then that will go on to determine what proteins are produced. DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid and it has four bases in it. G and C which go together and A and T which go together. As you saw in the model, and I'm going to draw an incredibly bad picture of this, it is in a double helix. When DNA is being read by the machinery in the cell, it reads it in groups of threes. So each block of three base pairs, an A, a T, a C or a G, will lead it to a different amino acid. So this one here, and you don't have to learn this, I'm just using this as an example, GCA leads to alanine. And then GGG leads to glycine. And then ATA is Iso leucine. C T T is leucine. C C T is proline. And then G um, T T is valine. Now, if there's a mistake when reading the DNA, if, for example, they skip this first letter, they're going to be reading the wrong um, words, essentially, the wrong three-letter codes, which is going to lead us to get a different set of amino acids. Now, this different sequence of amino acids isn't going to build the right protein. And if our DNA is misread and it builds the wrong protein, now nothing could happen or something disastrous could happen. When our DNA has been read and we end up with this chain of amino acids, they can then go on and be folded. So say for example, we've got a nice little row of positive ones here and we've got a nice little row of negative ones here. They might fold round and sit next to each other. Now this is quite complicated, so I'm not going to teach you much about this. This is going to be kind of like A-level biology, A-level chemistry, but it's really, really fascinating. This is our basic structure of an amino acid. Now over this side, we have our amino group. And over this side, we have our carboxylic acid group. Now this R here can refer to anything. So loads and loads of different things can be put in there. When two amino acids join together, it is a condensation reaction. Now it's a condensation reaction because these bits here are the bits that are joined to, going to join together and this is going to release water. 
to get a bond that is formed between this carbon and this nitrogen and we are going to get this little bit of water released here. Now obviously these are only two amino acids joining together. You would normally get a very, very, very long sequence of lots and lots of amino acids joining together. And this is a very long form of condensation polymerization.